Welcome back, so Saturday night, and here is a review. This review is for five games, which means there's a board behind this one. So that's a first for this season, although technically it's preseason, so I guess it doesn't count. Uh, the games that are on the board are the games I was able to watch. If it's not on the board, I didn't get to watch it. So, like for instance, currently there's an Arizona Vegas game, not on TV. So, there you go. All right, first off... Dallas and Minnesota. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to take too much from the preseason. So I won't. But the sooner that Dallas gets Robertson into the lineup, the better. So it was Ottinger versus Flurry. And again, no Robertson. Uh, good back and forth early. Rossi's tonight as the Wild Press. And then Erickson X scores on a wraparound from Jost and Middleton at 357. The Wild go to a power play not that long after. That's killed off by Dallas. The shots are 6 nothing though, for the Wild at six and a half minutes. So, yeah, the Wild were definitely the sharper team. And then they get another power play. This one they score on. It's Kaprizov from Zuccarello and Boldy at 8.49. Tipped in. Fantastic pass by Zuccarello. They're already in midseason form, which is bad news for the rest of the West. Uh, Stars press for an answer, but the Wild would then press with six minutes left. The Stars get a power play. That was killed off. Shots are evening up late. Scores not. Uh, Dallas not able to solve Flurry at that point. And then there's a press by the Wild in the final minute. But we're going into the second period with Minnesota up 2-0. Uh, second period, strong start by the Wild yet again. Marchman exits. He took a stick to the hand. He would return to the game later. Kivi Ranta has a chance that's held. But then at 319, Duhame scores on a rebound. Um, and a win and off of him, basically. Uh, Rossi and Goligoski with the assists. Rossi's been fantastic during the preseason. If this rolls over into the regular season and Boldy keeps playing the way we know he can, Minnesota's got a couple of good ones there. The assists on that, Rossi and Goligoski. Goligoski, nice to see him on the board too. Uh, the Stars would answer. It's Pavelski from Hockenpah and Hints at 522. It's a goal that Minnesota might have challenged if it was regular season, but Dean Evison resists the urge to challenge it, so he doesn't. Uh, the Stars get a power... I, I, I don't think challenges were allowed. I, I don't know. Challenges have been allowed in some games, I think, and not in others, and I, I don't know. Stars get a power play. That's killed off. We then had a fight between Miller and Duhame. Uh, the Stars end up on the power play. Ben has a rush chance. That saved the Wild, cleared out, and they kill it off. So after the second period, it is 4-1 to one for Minnesota. And though Dallas had more shots in the second, I still think Minnesota was the sharper team to this point. Third period, early press by the Stars as they're down by a bunch. Haskin and fires high. There's more pressure by them. The Wild would press back, get themselves a power play out of it. Uh, it's killed off. The Stars had a rush of their own. Uh, Marchman has a rush chance that deflects out. Duhame tips one wide as the Wild were then pressuring back. The shots are only 4-3 to three for the Wild with 8 minutes left. So Dallas, as much pressure as they were having, they weren't getting enough shots on the net. Uh, two minutes of 4-on-4 four four, uh, happens, and then we had a 4-on-3 for Minnesota. They scored during the 4-on-3. It's Kaprizov from Zuccarello and Erickson Eck at 14-15. Uh, the Stars would press with two and a half minutes left. Flurry holds on, and Minnesota wins this one going away 5-1. Dallas didn't bother pulling the goalie in this. So the shots are 10-8 Minnesota in the first, 12-10 Dallas in the second, 8-3 Minnesota in the third. They locked it down. Final shots 28-23 for Minnesota. Power plays Dallas 0 for 3, Minnesota 2 for 5. Hits were 15 each. Ottinger saved 16 out of 20. Wedgwood saves 7 out of 8 in the third period when he came in. Flurry saves 22 out of 23 and looked pretty good. So if you're if you're a Minnesota fan, you probably feel pretty good. Dallas really needs Robertson back now. All right, next up, Toronto against Detroit. Now, it is worthy of note, and the asterisk should be in there, but it's not because it's preseason, doesn't matter. But Detroit did not play a veteran lineup. I felt bad for these kids by the time we got to the third. It reminded me of the game between Edmonton and Vancouver, where Edmonton had a veteran lineup and Vancouver just didn't. Uh, so it's Olkanura versus Murray in this one. Good, good early forecheck by the Wings. It started off pretty well for them. They were out shooting Toronto 2-1 to at five minutes. Leafs get a power play. That's killed off. Two shots allowed by Detroit on that. And the Wings get stuck on two shots until that third shot went in. It's Suter from Ernie and Lindstrom at 11.33 to make it 1-0. So Detroit gets the lead. And again, this is despite them having a less than optimal lineup. Uh, the Leafs press with six minutes left. Eventually, they do tie it up. Nylander scores from Giordano and Riley at 15.24. Yarncroak then hits a post. That close to 2-1 to to, for Toronto. 
Wings get a power play with a minute and four seconds left, and it's a double minor as well. So that rolls over into the second period. Uh, Muzzin got hurt in the first, but he would return, return to start the second period. So that's good news for Toronto. Y you don't want to lose Jake Muzzin. Uh, solid kill by the Leafs. Uh, there's a shorthanded rush by Kampf that ends up finishing it off. But there were no shots on net in the first five minutes of this period. Murray then held on when the Wings were pressuring. The Leafs, though, they press at six and a half minutes. Uh, Nylander plays some keep away. He's had a very good preseason. But when you see Nylander out there, you can tell that the Wings don't have their A-team out there because I, I don't think he would have been able to dangle like that with the A-team out there. Uh, but then Malgin would score from Kerfoot at 11.55. It's an end-to-end -end goal. It's a highlight reel goal. Melgan continues to show he deserves a spot on this roster. Toronto, by Monday at 5 o'clock Eastern, has to get under the cap. They're going to have to make some sacrifices to get there. There's some debate about who will or won't make this lineup. Uh, Bratstrom then ends up going in net, not because Olka Nura had a rough game or anything, but because, um, yeah, it was it was time to make a change here. So, um, the shots are 4-3 to three for the Leafs with 7 minutes left. There's a near miss by Gaudette as the Leafs press, and then with 6 seconds left, the Wings get a power play. So down 2-1, to one, it's a key power play for the Wings to start the third. They did set up early, and they got the cycle going. Zadina has a shot that saved. The Leafs cleared out. They killed it off. They allowed two shots. Uh, then the Leafs get a power play, and this is where the mountain just starts to starts to fall down on Detroit. First, it's Matthews from Marner and Riley at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, and it took 8 seconds after the faceoff uh, to start that power play for the Leafs to score and go up 3-1, to one, and Matthews just blasted it. Leafs then go for another. Marner with a net feed. That won't go, but the Leafs, they get another power play. They score on this one as well. It's Nylander with a second goal of the game from Kerfoot and Marner at 7.02. Nylander's had a great preseason. Uh, then there's a delay game call. That gives the Wings a power play. Toronto was able to kill that off. They allowed one shot. Gaudet has a chance to deflect wide. The Wings get a power play. That's killed off as well, and just the one shot. So Detroit had power play opportunities, couldn't bury him. But then there's a delay a game call. The Leafs get a power play, and Matthews scores on the power play, because of course he does, from Riley and Marner at 13.49. So that power play powers the Leafs to the 5-1 to one victory. Uh, and again, Detroit, it's a B roster, so I'm not sure what you take out of this if you're Toronto. The shots are 11-8 Toronto in the first, 9-5 Toronto in the second. Each team had six shots in the third. Final shots 26-19 for Toronto. Power plays Detroit 0 for 5, Toronto 3 for 4. The hits were 36-31 for Detroit. Pretty physical game. Uh, Okanura saves 15, or 14 out of 16, I should say. Bradstrom saves 8 out of 11. Those stats I pulled from the app clearly wrong because the Leafs scored five times. And only showed me the Oakland Arrow allowed one when I know he allowed two. Murray saves 18 out of 19 at the other end. Decent start, but what do you take out of this for Murray, right? It was the B team for Detroit, so are you? And I was kind of surprised it was the B team for Detroit since now they don't play for a while. They were off for quite a while. They're one of the last teams, if not the last team, to get the season started. So I was kind of surprised they didn't put their main guys out there, but every coach is different. You don't want to see somebody get hurt. Next up, New Jersey and Boston. And it, for some reason, this game makes me concerned for Boston. Just it, At points in this, it was kind of reminding me of when Boston got off to that rough start two years ago and they couldn't score five on five. I got some, some vibes of that from this game. It was Blackwood versus Olmark. Olmark would play the whole game. Blackwood would not. Uh, scrappy early. Frederick's involved in that. And he ends up going to the box for a devil's power play. But Boston kills that off. Bruins press at four minutes. Bergeron had a rush shot that was held. No rebound allowed by Blackwood. Shots are five to four for New Jersey, eight minutes into this. And the Devils press at nine minutes. So the Devils coming up looking pretty good in this one. There's a power play then for the Devils. That leads to a shorthanded three on two for Boston and a near miss by A.J. Greer, who's really trying to make the argument he belongs on this roster as the Boston Bruins have some decisions to make over the next couple of days. Keep an eye on that waiver wire. Uh, Hamilton then blocks the Zaka net feed. But before the period is out, Holtz opens the scoring for New Jersey from Hughes and Marino at 18-10, and he just buried it from in close. Not much chance for Olmark on that one. It's 1-0 New Jersey after the first. Second period, early jump for the Bruins. They end up getting a power play not long after. Uh, Pasternak can't bury. The power play's killed off. Two shots for Boston on their power play. But then Boston gets another power play, and they score on this one to tie it. It's Pasternak from Krejci at 7:59, and that was on a turnover by Ryan Graves. Uh, Bruins then push for the lead. There's a press by the Bruins. Riley's denied. 
Uh, Lindholm then had a shot that deflects wide, but then New Jersey scores. It's Mercer, makes it 2-1 from Hamilton and Zetterland at 11.44. Uh, Tatar to Mercer then, a near miss, is now New Jersey, sensing that they've they've got the opportunity and the momentum. Uh, they were pushing for it. Studnika's robbed. Vanacek holds theirs. Vanacek's now gone into the net. Uh, the Devils, back-to-back -back icings by them. They'd had three in a few minutes, but it doesn't hurt them. Uh, the Bruins did press in the final minute, but it's 2-1 New Jersey after two. Now, what's funny is the app was saying it was 3-1. to one. And I was like, where's that third goal? And I'm turning on the game, and I'm like, there's no third goal. Well, they're psychic. The people who run the NHL app are psychic because there's early jump for the Devils, and they would score. It's Hughes from Holtz and Marino at 130, and if that goal didn't excite you as a New Jersey fan, I'm not sure what will. And then Sharon Govich adds one at 259 to make it 4-1. to one. Uh, Lauko then had a fast break. That was saved. Uh, no set can't bury one on a break. There's a net feed to Tatar then. Near miss there. Uh, the shots are 6-4 to four for the Bruins with seven minutes left. But they've allowed two goals on those shots. And again, I, I don't fault Olmark in this. Uh, it's just when Devils, well, the Devils had a really good opportunity, they buried it. So Sharon Govich fires one high in a rush, and then one goes in off. It looked like it was Felino's leg. I know that they've they've changed the scoring. I think now it's Lauko from Felino and Forbert. It's the preseason, so I've still got Felino from Forbert and Clifton at 14-15. Forbert was originally awarded the goal. It doesn't matter. These stats all get wiped out. Uh, Boston pulls the goalie relatively early with 3.30 left, and they score. It's Bergeron from Krejci and Lindholm at 17-14 to make it 4-2. They pull the goalie again with a minute and 45 seconds left, and Tatar hits the empty net at 19.42 to make the score 5-3 for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they win this one on the road. They outshot Boston in the first period 15-7. Boston outshoots them from there 13-7 in the second, 10-5 in the third. Final shots are 30-27 for Boston. Uh, power plays, New Jersey 0-2, for 2, Boston 1-2. for 2. The hits were 28-21 for the Boston Bruins. Uh, Blackwood saves 15 out of 16, Vanacek saves 12 out of 14, and Olmark saved 22 out of 26. So, pretty strong, pretty good game. I'm keeping an eye on Jet. She's over on, on my ottoman over here, and I'm, I'm just I'm a little nervous with where she's at. So let me pause. Sure enough, I take a couple steps over, and Jet runs the other way. So, moving on, Rangers and the New York Islanders. Uh, this was an interesting game. It feels like an Islanders game. So... We'll see with Lane Lambert. Are we going to see a more open game or are we going to see the same style we saw under Barry Trotz? Which should, which should be odd because if you do make a change behind the bench, you're normally looking for a different style of game. But I didn't really see that tonight. So it's Shesterkin versus Sorokin in this one. Uh, the shots are 2-0 for the Rangers at three minutes. So they had the early opportunities. Trocek has a rush opportunity that was defended. The Islanders were defending very well tonight. Um, Isles press at six and a half minutes, but they're blocked to the outside. The Rangers weren't giving them much to look at. Sorokin holds on to a Kreider chance, and then Bellows opens the scoring. He scores from Ajo at 9.06 on a turnover that was committed by Trocek. And that was only the first shot on net for the Islanders. So, uh, Shesterkin allowing a goal in the first shot. Game doesn't count, right? That's right. Um, so, the Rangers would get a power play. That was killed off by the Islanders. Sorokin with a mishandle, but he recovers, and the Rangers didn't get a really key chance out of that. And then Barzell. At 16-16, he makes it 2-0 from Bailey, and the Islanders are ahead 2-0 in a game that I thought was pretty even. Goaltending is sometimes the difference, which is weird because the goalie at the other end is Shesterkin, but here we are. Um, Islanders then get a power play. There was a shorthanded rush by Kako that ended it, and again, I think Kako's in for a breakthrough season. If he can do what he's done in the preseason, and I know all the asterisks for preseason... But I think he played very well in the preseason, so I'm hoping he can uh, have that carry over. But it's 2-0 Islanders after one. Second period, shots are 3-1 to one for the Rangers at four minutes, so they have the better start. Sabanajet has a shot saved. The Rangers get a power play. Uh, Goudreau has a chance that's held, and that's killed off. Uh, the Rangers press at seven minutes. Beauvillier is then robbed on a fast break for the Islanders. Uh, there was a shorthanded chance by Carpenter. That was saved. Uh, power play's killed off, but the Islanders get another power play because preseason, and this happens in some games. Uh, the It's killed off, or no, uh, Dobson with a blast, that's held, and then we end up with a four-on-four, four, uh, which leads to a 56-second power play for the Rangers. Everything gets killed off, no harm, no foul. Uh, Sezikis is then denied after a steal by Anders Lee in the Rangers' end. 
But after two periods, the score is the same. It's still 2-0 Islanders. And again, it feels like an Islanders game, although it wasn't faster than the other games. It's one thing with Barry Trotz behind the bench. The games always seem to go faster. All the games would start at the same time. The Islanders game was done 20 minutes before everybody else. He had them playing like they were renting the ice by the hour. Third period, it's VC versus Romanov after Romanov throws a hit that, honestly, I thought it was a clean hit. He's penalized for a charge on the play. I, but anyways, it's a four-on-four four because VC gets the instigator. So uh, there you go. VC jumping in for a teammate, trying to earn himself a, a roster spot. The Islanders get a brief four-on-three. Gallant was upset with the call that led to the four-on-three. And then, to make him more upset, Parisi scores to make it 3-0 on that power play from Bailey and Beauvillier at 4-28. Uh, the Rangers press. The Islanders are shot blocking. And at 6.50, the Rangers answer. It's Kako from Schneider. So Kako with another one in the preseason. I'm sure if you're a Rangers fan, you're thinking, man, I wish these counted and get his confidence up. Hopefully, these goals in the preseason have got Kako's confidence up and he'll be good to go for the start of the year. Uh, Romanov then couldn't bury in close as the Islanders tried to answer. The Rangers press with seven and a half minutes left. With 7.06 left, the Rangers get a power play. Uh, there's a timeout for the Rangers with 2.52 left. Uh, they also pulled the goalie at that same time. Uh, the Rangers cycle, but the Islanders are shot blocking. They did a very good job. In fact, the Rangers didn't get a shot during that entire six on five with 2.52 left. So the final score is three to one for the Islanders. Uh, shots are eight to five Rangers in the first, 12 seven Rangers in the second, nine to four Rangers in the third. That's right, the Islanders outshot by a total of 29 to 16. Power plays, both teams had four. The Rangers were 0 for four. The Islanders were one for four. Hits 24 to 18 for the Rangers, not an overly physical game. Shesterkin, 13 saves on 16 shots. Sorokin, 28 saves on 29 shots. So Sorokin outduels Shesterkin, and we'll see how it goes. But hey, guess what? I have to change boards. And last but not least, Columbus and the Washington Capitals. And this is the one game that ends up going past uh, 60 minutes today. And it was jinxed because Samantha Pell didn't want overtime. And then, of course, that means you're going to get it. So it was Merzlikens versus Kemper. She's a beat writer for the Capitals. Uh, Merzlikens versus Kemper in this one. Early press by Columbus. Follow all the beat writers. You'll find out a lot more about the NHL teams than you might think. Uh, so the shots are 4-2 to two for Columbus at 3.5 minutes. Uh, the first goal is scored by Washington. It's Mantha. He tips it. No chance for Elvis on that one. Faravari and Carlson with the assists at 9.56. And then the Caps almost add another. But at 10.37, Line A would be answering with a goal of his own from Jenner and Goudreau. Then there was a post for Boquist. So now the momentum's on the side of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Really exciting game, comparatively speaking, with some of the other preseason games I've watched. Columbus gets a power play. Uh, Cole Sillinger fires wide, but Chinikov doesn't. He scores again. That's what, his sixth of the preseason? From Boquist and Sillinger at 14.58. Yeah, Boquist has had a good uh, preseason as well. Uh, the Caps, though, they then get a power play. There was a near miss by Ovechkin, and it's killed off. And it was passed to Ovi's feet, kind of, so he had to kind of choke up on the stick, and he couldn't get the shot off. Um, Caps then get another power play. There was a shorthanded chance for Robinson that deflects wide. And then Ovechkin's next opportunity, he buries it on the power play from Carlson and Kuznetsov at 1947. At the horn, we get some pushing and shoving. So some dis dislike between these teams as it's 2-2 after one. This game looked like it could be a really high scoring affair. Second period, Columbus had the early edge and eventually they get the lead back. Uh, Corrali scores from Boquist and Wierenski at 325. Uh, then Connor Brown had a rush opportunity, couldn't bury on that. Uh, Caps shot blocking uh, as the next press by Columbus has taken place. And then Dowd would tie the game from Hathaway and Jensen at 8.34. So it's 3-3. We're not even halfway through the game. And I was thinking, boy, this could be 6-7, seven, 7-5, seven to 6-6-5. Six to, six to five. Nope. Uh, so Caps get a power play. That's killed off. Columbus gets a power play after that. Goudreau fires one wide. There's a shorthanded chance for Hathaway. He was denied. But then on his way by, he ends up tripping the goalie. That's goalie interference every time. And that was at the end of the power play. And it's a penalty, so they go right back to the penalty kill. Uh, Wierenski has a blast that deflects out. The Caps killed that one off as well. Uh, the Caps press with three and a half minutes left. Protus was denied from the slot. Um, 34.7 left. Columbus gets a power play. But that rolls over into the third period. A good cycle by, by Columbus at the start of the third on that power play, but the Caps do kill it off. Uh, the shots are 4-2 to two for Columbus, four minutes in. The Caps then get a power play, and that's right, it's killed off. You guys know where this is going. 
uh, mid-season form for people watching. Uh, Gustafson then had a chance, or uh, Protus had a wraparound that was held. Gustafson then has a chance this deflected wide. So a lot of guys in this Caps lineup will see how everything shakes down, which defensemen make it, which guys are on which line come start of the season. Uh, good back and forth with four minutes left. Robinson then had a chance that was held. We get some pushing after that. Uh, the Caps press with two minutes left, and then Jenner was robbed on a turnover, and we're going to overtime. Uh, in the overtime, Columbus wins the faceoff. They get the control early. They don't get a shot. They turn the puck over, and the Caps make them pay. Strom scores from Brown and Carlson at 39 seconds. It was on a rush, and he fired it in. Again, not much chance for Merzlikens on that. Your final score is 4-3 to three in overtime for the Caps. Uh, so your shots in this one, 15-8 Columbus in the first. Both teams had 11 shots in the second. Shots were 13-12 to 12 in the third in favor of Columbus. Washington had the only shot of overtime, and that's the shot that matters. Final shots, 39-32 to 32 for Columbus. Power plays, both teams went one for four. Hits were 22-13 to 13 for Columbus. Merzlikan saves 28 out of 32. Kemper saved 36 out of 39. So there you go. Final review of the preseason. I feel like I'm I'm getting my form. I'm ready for the regular season. And it starts on Tuesday. So be ready for that. There's going to be some busy, busy nights for me. But I feel like, yeah, I'm ready for this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the games we saw tonight. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.